All right, and we're uh, back on uh, part two. We got kind of cut off because of technical difficulty. So you were just, um, you were talking about um, bacteria, getting it from the uh, wild plants and the uh, bacteria, the most important kinds. In fact, the two most important bacteria for mammals are bifidobacteria, which is, as I mentioned, it's inherent supposed to be the first thing that all mama are supposed to get from the breast milk of the species and acidophilus which is coming mostly from fermentation of plants or even dairy um, there is tremendous science behind their effect not only on the health and immune system of the newborn but also on protection from infection of the adults on protection of the immune system, on keeping the body lean, yeah, uh, energy efficient, lean, and preventing diseases. We don't get them enough. And I mentioned before, I don't know if it's on the tape, that many of the pro pro commercial probiotics that we get in the stores have been proven, I believe about two years ago, to be extremely dangerous and unbeneficial harmful when the population overwhelm the positive bacteria. So many of the probiotic strain on the whole idea, multi-strain, we believe that more is better. More is not better. Hmm. Less is more. You need to make the right choices. This is not democracy. This is biology. The majority doesn't count and doesn't rule. It's the good. It's the beneficial that is important. Eating food which is sterilized, fungicized, or, and depleted of bacteria, or having a diet which tend to be sterilized is a horrible thing to do. You really need to take this chance. Yeah, there's always a risk, but when you put in your body the right bacteria, you become very resilient to infections, including naturally occurring pathogen that is fine and was always found on food. And when you eat your grass, eat it from the ground. When you eat your plants or your fruit, eat it from the ground. Avoid food that was synthetically or trickly grown. Eat it the old-fashioned way, the way nature intended, you cannot go. Now, you asked me about B12, I want to say a couple of words. I have a chapter in my book, it's called Synthetic Vitamin. Synthetic vitamins is one of the worst chemical we can put to our body. It literally shut down our ability to produce our own antioxidant. It literally interfere with our ability to utilize nutrient, vitamin, and antioxidant from food. It inhibit one of our most powerful antioxidant enzyme system and prohibit it from expressing itself. Synthetic vitamin have proven to shatter the performance and biological fitness of other mammals as well. We should stop taking synthetic nutrients. We never evolve for them. It will never benefit us. And for the same reason, we don't even have to take fish oil. And I tell you why. Because we are one of the only primates in Apes and human are perhaps the only species that, not the only, but one of the only species that exclusively can utilize plant omega-3 oil into long-chain bioactive essential fatty acid. We have the esterase enzyme that converted perfectly in the right amount. So we don't have the side effect of rancid essential oil that become rancid in our bodies. And even if you eat it from fish, it will come from the food, not from a peel that was synthetically sterilized and filterized and with all the detergents added with flavors, whatever. We don't need that. So unless you are clinically sick, which you may need to take some concentrated level of omega-3 from fish oil. You don't need it. You should eat 
plant food like hemp seed from hemp seed or chia seed, even flax seed, you have the chance now to activate a whole pathway from the long chain to the super long chain, enjoy all the byproduct and everything that the seed oil can give you. That's the way biologically evolved using full pathway, no without shortcut. And that relates to everything that we do. Eat food, use, use your saliva, digest it properly. Give proper signal of satiety to your brain so you don't binge. Yes, drinking food can cause a binge effect. It failed to promote proper satiety. Avoid all chemical, all synthetic vitamin, all artificial sweetener, and all synthetic or chemical molecules. We never evolved for them. They all, with no exception, cause side effects. Suicide effects that affect our fitness and health. So, like I mentioned, I'm a, a, a vegan, and I, you know, I, I hear this different thing. I've been vegetarian for or vegan for most of my life. Nice. You know, but like sometimes, like I wonder, am I really missing anything? Because I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I feel healthy, strong. I don't really get sick. I'm pretty strong. I'm. Uh, I'm glad so, to hear that. Like. From uh, from your perspective, is is there something that vegans should be extra careful of that we might not be getting, or um, just like what's your? I I think vegans need to be very smart with the diet and understand fully not only how to nourish the body but also how to enjoy life. Because if you don't enjoy what you eat, again, you're gonna fall into the situation of chronic stress, and mm -hmm. your body will outsmart you. So the first trap is to avoid processed food, particularly processed starches and sugars. It still belongs to vegan. You can have junk cookies, vegan cookies with full of sugar and white flour, still call yourself vegan. And I saw many vegan people who suffer the consequences of wrong abuse of yeah. veganism. Yeah, um, Oreos are vegan, so. Uh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Um, so we need to create priorities. I'd rather you not be vegan and eat some lacto-vegetarian diet or piscatarian diet than fall trap to the sweets and um, jeopardize your health and shorter your lifespan. After, I, I truly believe that you need to inquire the priorities. So the priorities are very simple again. Basic essential nutrients and antioxidant and longevity promoting, survival promoting nutrients from the greens and the fruits and the roots. And then we have protein that a vegan person should, especially an athlete, should be aware of. Probably mostly coming from beans, nuts, and seeds. If you know how to combine it, by the way, they could be combined. You also need to think about, I wrote about it many times, the right food combination. You do not want to combine fat, high fat food with high carb food. Fruits and nuts not go, don't go together unless it's very small amount. They don't go. So every time decide what is your fuel. I do believe in sprout very well, but when it's coming to beans, don't even take a chance of eating them raw, even if it sprouts. I would not take the chance. Beans and all grain sprout must be cooked. In fact, the more you cook them, the more biologically viable they become. Mm. Peanuts, for instance. Peanuts is a superfood. If you just know what the nutrient in peanuts, it's stunning. It has more resveratrol than in berries. Mm. It has compound like nicotinamide riboside. It's a molecule that I call it the fuel of life. It's basically trigger gene activity that increase your defenses against DNA breakdown. It increases energy utilization efficiency. It keeps you young. I, I don't want to be too technical on the cell, but I was a bit technical sometime in my book just to show what that peanuts and, and milk from, breast milk from grass-fed animal are the only two for that bring you this molecule. 
NR, nicotinamide riboside, this tremendous science behind it. We don't get this nutrient from our food. Vegan can take a huge advantage of it. I'm a believer in lactobacterianism with a good choice because milk does not involve the killing of the animal, neither collection of eggs from free range hens. But if you are vegan, just make sure you do the food combination right. You choose your priority. First of all, again, essential nutrient, antioxidant and long, uh, life extending nutrients, like in the green sprouts, beets, mm. and roots, and um, good protein from legumes, seeds and nuts. You do it right, you cannot, again, you cannot go. Yeah, it's fascinating what you're saying. I, I do eat a lot of uh, peanuts, a lot, a lot of peanut butter, and um, I love peanut soup. Yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't know that about the um, that chemical. Only one of two sources of that's that's fascinating. Uh, and you're so this bacteria thing, like kombucha, is getting really popular now. Like I, I see it all over, and it's you know it has you know it shows all these different strains, and so. I guess I like for what part of me is like once it gets to the gut, doesn't a lot of it going to get destroyed anyway with the chem, with the um, um, stomach acids and stuff? But then, like you're saying, that there's only a couple of them that we want anyway, and that we're doing like a lot of harm. And kombucha is like this thing that's just exploding. Like there's 50 different kinds at the health food stores now. I know, and I saw the meat behind it. I personally. I would recommend people to be very careful with fungus, especially fungus that grow on sugar, like yeast. Um, it can be very adverse. Um, I do not recommend kombucha to anyone. Wow. I believe that fermentation of that kind could also create MSG. Uh, and there's a thin line between good and bad fermentation. And... It could be that all the story that they say about kombucha is right. I just, as a matter of principle, avoid all fungus nutrition if I can. So anything that have yeast, um, again, human never evolved to use yeast as a main nutrient. The case of allergy against yeast is staggering. Not just, especially about female, but not just female, about male too. Um, and don't think there is no connection between yeast mm. and kind of fungus infection and candida. And candida is detrimental to your health. Stay with good, proven bacteria that naturally occur. Uh, and I, I'm again, I'm just against sugar fermentation. Um, I'm, I don't think that all alcohol or sugar alcohol that come from sugar fermentation are good for us. I think we should avoid sugar alcohol by all means. If it's naturally occurring in plant, like a large stream, small amount of milligram, it's okay. When it's coming in gram, a large amount is absolutely detrimental to our health. We should use that. So I'm not a big fan of any funguses that grow on sugar. Well, that's really fascinating. I, I wasn't expecting that, and I... I um... It's kind of like surprising because of how, you know, the, the marketing behind it and those like probiotics and prebiotics and all this kind of stuff. And then maybe that's people need to, yeah, they, you know, there's a trend. The industry has its own nature. It's a monster mm -hmm. that's hard to feed itself. And people are so desperate today to a direction that will take anything. Why right? they will take anything that they can believe in. But what's the point of believing in something that could be bad for you? What's the point of believing something that doesn't have persuasive science? There is incredible science against the use of yeast nutrition. Half of, or more, the majority of natural, so-called natural vitamins are coming from yeast today. I think it's a horrible mistake yeah. to take nutrients like this. Vitamins are supposed to come from plants, period. If we have good probiotics like bifidobacteria, rest assured, that you would cover all your vitamins, all the B vitamins, another source of B vitamin, great. Just chew, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. Rice bread, rice bread. 
It has a sweet, naturally sweet, good smell to it. Chewy, fresh rice bread will give it the B vitamin. But bacteria produce a vitamin, including B12. 100 times more DNA for microbes in our body that coordinate and collaborate with our metabolism. So what you want to avoid is the pathogenic bacteria that can basically age you and finish you. You don't want to have an excess. You don't want to have excess of pathogenic bacteria in your digestive tract or your body. And think about it. Human being or any animal can survive extreme condition, but once they're dead, immediately all the pathogens and all the microbe and all the worms take place, manifest themselves on the dead body. Mm. So from that point, you understand how critical it is, the role of good microbes in our system to protect us minute by minute, the integrity of our organ and the skin and the ability to survive. It is much more simple than people think. So again, more is not better. There is no reason for you to lose your priority, binge and eat some junk food, and then take kombucha and say that you're doing something good. Because it's wrong, wrong, and wrong again. Start with the basic, make your priorities, and don't go fancy. Just stay with a simple, healthy diet you cannot go wrong. Yeah, that's really fascinating. I think that's going to surprise a, surprise a lot of people. Um, I could just like ask you like more and more and, and, and have you on here for all, all day long. Um, but we can start to wrap it up if you want. We can, uh, is there uh, anything that we haven't mentioned yet uh, that you were wanting to get into? Well, if people want to find more, I'm working now with some project, interesting project, uh, which um, they can find out in my Facebook um, or Instagram. My book, The Seven Principles of Stress and the Warrior Diet, and the other book, uh, Anti Estrogenic Diet, Unlock Your Muscle Gene. But especially my recent book, The Seven Principles of Stress, is now available in Amazon, published by North Atlantic Books and Penguin. And um, I'm here at my Facebook to answer questions. And if, if I can help you, the listener, uh, deal with your situation the best possible way. Yeah, I definitely recommend all, all of your books. I've read, I'm pretty sure I've read all of them, um, except for all of the last one. I haven't read all of this, this past one, but it just as makes far, As far as, sorry, Ryan, as far as the people, many people come to me and ask you where they can get the soft nutrients that I talked about. Mm -hmm. It's available in Amazon in our shop, Defense Nutrition shop in Amazon. And I'm definitely looking for your feedback mm -hmm. when you're experiencing, first of all, the diet and then the nutrients. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. So, One question for you, Ryan. What kind of protein do you take? What kind of protein are you eating, consuming? I eat a lot of peanut butter and I'll get, um, I try to like stay away from soy. But I will get like the, um, I work a lot of like crazy hours and stuff. So I like stuff that's easy to make, but I'll get, um, like I like hemp protein and I'll get, if I get like the prepackaged stuff, like there's like more like less processed ones now that like more like, um, um, like gluten, like, like we, I don't think I have a problem with it, but, um, and like pea protein. So I'll get like the, the nut milks with the added uh, pea protein. I got you. So you're drinking. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we can find solution, innovating solution in the future for vegan mm -hmm. to enjoy chewing protein without this. I understand the problem, but I believe, yeah, come and visit my Facebook because I'm working now on solution new generation of protein for artists or anyone uh, that hopefully can be more bio bioavailable and bioactive and more enjoyable to consume. 
Yeah, yeah, I will for sure. Yeah, I do like a lot of different kinds of nuts and stuff, but there's, um, I kind of like vary it. Sometimes my diet is like almost the exact same for a long time, and then I switch it up. So I will do that for, um, for sure, because I'm always looking to like, how can I tweak this? And like a lot of your books, I, I think they have like, there, there's a lot of like really good information. And then like some of them I've made like a, a checklist out of, like I, when I read the anti-estrogenic diet, I just started making a checklist. Yes, no, take this, use this, don't use that. And I just made a, a big checklist out of it. I have it, it's, it, it's in one of my notebooks somewhere around here. And it's just like this plain and simple. Like, and uh, so I'm looking forward to digging more into this last one that you've written. I'm just yeah, really fascinated by all of it. I, I really appreciate you coming on. I've, I've been a big fan of your work for a long time. This is, this is really cool for me. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. I enjoy the conversation. All right. Any, uh, what was that last part? Say good luck with everything. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, any like, uh, last, last words for everyone before I let you go? No, I said what I said, you know, where to get my books. Um, and, um, again, um, I believe in interaction like you. Uh, so, um, definitely will review any question that you have on my Facebook and try to address question or any needs and, and uh, Brian, keep in touch and let me know. I'm glad that you're vegan and a sportman and so active. I'll be interested to see how you progress with everything. Let's keep in touch. Yeah, sounds really, really good. I really appreciate that. I'll uh, stop the recording now and I'll talk to you for just a second when we're done.